Hey guys, and welcome back to another live video. So, this is actually recorded on my phone. I don't have my tripod for my camera, so this video might be a little bit shaky, but I need to get this over with. So, I'm going to be doing a, a deck profile of my Constellar Knights and uh, talking about the deck and still debating on whether I want to run it or not, but uh, maybe you guys can give me some points and tips and uh, help me out with this deck for this regional that's coming up on this weekend. So, of course, starting it off, we have, of course, three costs. Oh. Three costs, that is a given. Uh, it's Constellar, so costs, definitely. And, uh, of course, we have Triple Pollux. You know, Rota went up to uh, three, so definitely going to be searching out this guy with the Triple Rota, so that's good. And we have... I'm having a very hard time doing this right now. Like, my hands and stuff are inverted. Triple Sombra. Yeah, uh, if you're not running Triple Sombra in Constellars, I don't know what you're doing because Sombra is so good. And I actually do triple Algidi or Algidi or Algidi or whatever the fuck her name is. Uh, I like the consistency of summoning uh, Pleiades. You know, uh, you know we have Pollux, but we also have Algidi, of course. And when Pollux isn't there, Algidi is there to help you. So it is nice to have Algidi. So I like triple Algidi. And uh, literally, that is all the Constellar monsters. I only run 12. I do not run any Sheratons. I'm not a really big fan of Sheraton, nor am I really considering running Sheraton at this current moment. I have tried Sheraton in the past, and literally, if I'm not searching for costs, it literally just really doesn't do much, so I'm not really a big fan of Sheraton. It really doesn't have Synergy with Dresda. If it was level 4, hell yeah. But because it's level 3, doesn't have Synergy with Dresda deck, I'm not a big fan of it. And then I'm not going to run Leonis and stuff like that either. All right, so... Uh, that is the Constellar half of it, so of course this is just Constellar Knights, so of course we have Triple Deneb, so uh, still debating on this, uh, you know, they help with the deck's consistency, help with this plays, they only think sometimes, you know, they might clog together, and, uh, you know, I won't have synergy, like I'll maybe have like an Elgaidi and an Ultai Air in hand, and, you know, of course, they don't have synergy with each other, which sucks, because I would love for them to have synergy with each other, but they don't, so... Yeah, and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe taking out the Teller Knights, just having a pure Constellar deck, and then taking the Teller Knights and making that, like, a separate deck, maybe, like, a fun deck to play with. But, um, you know, just with only 12 monsters in the Constellars, uh, I just feel like it's not, and its monster count's not high enough, I'll get a whole bunch of spells and traps in hand, and it won't be good. So, you know, I'm trying to be, I mean, maybe we can play a little bit Honest, maybe Thunder King, I don't know. Bear's not that good, because that sucks, you know, Bear was good, we can go, we can go the Bear Wolf Bark option, with Wolf Bark being back at three, but, you know, so I thought that maybe this option would be a mess this thing, maybe you put the hands back in, but then, of course, hands aren't good this format, and it's just, uh, I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions for the Constellar deck, uh, just pure Constellars, not Constellar Knights, just pure Constellars, uh, be sure to go ahead and, like, comment, comment, like, your, your 40 card deck in the comment section below, and, uh, we can go ahead and just work this out, so... Well, for now, telling Constellar Knights, yes, triple Deneb. And, of course, triple Altair. That is a total given. Deneb and Altair, so good. I run one Vega. Uh, I personally like one Vega. I could run more, but I kind of feel like one is enough. Uh, um, it's not really a Knight deck, and Vega doesn't really go off with this place too much, you know. I can go Vega... Summon Altair, Altair, summon Deneb, search, and then make the Deltaros, or, you know, if I draw Deneb, I can go Vega into Deneb, or Vega, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, you know, if I draw into, like, an Altair and Deneb, then I can go Altair, summon the Vega from the graveyard, or Vega, summon the Deneb from my hand, and then do it, so, uh, Vega is good, but it's not really necessary to be running more copies of it, so, just one. Alright, and that's the monsters, the, uh, 19 monsters, 12 Constellars, and 7 Teller Knights, so... Uh, yeah. Alright, so, on to the spells, of course, uh, because Koss is our boss, one of our boss cards, and we want him to get him as much as possible. We are running the triple tanky for the triple Koss. I don't, I'll take the risk of dead drawing, I will, just because I want to get Koss as much as possible, because Koss literally allows me to go into that pleady, so I want to see Koss as much as possible, so, triple tanky. Uh, then I said Bear is not good this format, so. Not gonna be running bear because it's kind of a waste of a card. That could be something else in the deck that can put in more work. So, yeah. Uh, and of course, we are running 
the triple rota because rota went up to three so not is it only for the telonites but it's also for pollux and even if i took out the telonites and it was only just pollux i would run triple rota just because pollux is very important very important card as well just like uh call so i would run triple rota and triple tanky uh consistency is key so i'm a big fan of that next we run triple space because fuck back row and fuck vanities so triple mst clear out that back row and go off with my pleadies of course and the one of broke charge should have been banned but it didn't so i'm gonna play it in here so i can go ahead and pay 2000 life points to for some to summon pollux and cough and make another pleadies so yeah all right and that is it for uh the spells that's uh 10 spells yeah 10 spells uh spell Lineup is fine. I don't mind it. Uh, you know, I could probably maybe squeeze a Book of Moon in there, but I'm still debating on whether I want to run Book of Moon or not, so I'm not sure about that. All right, so on to the traps. I do have some proxies for traps. Uh, my friend has them, and I didn't get them off of them, and I had to do deck profile, so uh, I got proxies. So uh, these, this is actually supposed to be trap stun. So, yeah, my friend actually has the other two trap stuns. I just never got it from him, so proxy it for Rotocree. So uh, triple trap stun, uh, you know, one of the things that hinders Constellars, Constellars, I'm not sure about Telenites, but I know definitely Constellars the most, is um, back row. Back row can shut you down, so uh, it's nice to go ahead and uh, flip up a, a, a trap stun, stun your opponent's back row for the turn and be able to go up, or, you know, with Vanities and everybody and their money, mother running triple Vanities this format, it might be good to go ahead and flip up a trap stun, stun that Vanities, make the Pleiades, and then when you pass it back to them, Vanities will be active again, and um, they can't special summon, so... Uh, yeah, so I like Trap Stun. <sighs> uh, next we have Triple Vanities. My friend has the third one, so yes, I know Vanities. So I'm trying to go, I'm thinking about going the Hypocrite route. So going uh, Triple Vanities with Triple Trap Stun. So, you know, uh, I flip up Vanities, my opponent can't play, and then I go ahead and flip up a Trap Stun during my turn. Not only uh, blocking my opponent's traps so they can't stop my place, my turn, but also uh, stunning the Vanities Emptiness, which will allow me to Special Summon during my turn, and then it will turn back on uh, during my opponent's next turn. So, uh, Triple Vanity, of course, you pretty much have to run it in a competitive deck, so definitely, because if I whip out Pleiades and flip up that Vanities, then that's a, that's a very hard time. All right. Uh, uh, triple breakthrough scale. I'm missing the breakthrough scale. My friend had it, but I didn't get it from him, so I'm just going to replace it with a Venus Chain, which I also wanted to talk about. So, uh, triple breakthrough scale. Uh, breakthrough scale is really good. This format, uh, you know, artifacts are still a thing, so, because, you know, the artifact engine didn't get hit, so it's nice to go ahead and break this scale. Um, the, the moral talk, you know twice pretty much because you can also do it in your graveyard and also breakthrough skill is good against you know uh tele knights making their i mean not tele knights um uh burning abyss making their own pleadies it's good uh for when my opponents uh summon a midrash on me i can go ahead and break through skill the midrash and then special summon uh and overall just a really good card so uh, i like breakthrough skill so breakthrough skill uh oh and uh finish chain let me talk about finish chain all right uh finish chain I am considering running. I uh, I personally like the card. Uh, you know, it works pretty well with uh, with um, with vanities because you know I can just chain you. Uh, you know, nothing's sent from my field to graveyard, so. Uh, the vanity stays while the Phoenix Chain is still holding you down. Uh, I can always, uh, you know, if I if I Phoenix Chain one of your monsters and then I make a Pleiades and, and I know I can kill you, I can go Pleiades Effect, bounce the Phoenix Chain back to my hand, kill your monster, and then go ahead and just reset the Phoenix Chain for next turn. So, I've been considering that too. If I take out the Teller Knights and I just make it just pure Constellars, I would probably run Triple Phoenix Chain with a Triple Breakthrough Skill because Effect Negation is very, very key key and doing well this format uh being able to fiendish chain and negate those swoop effects uh, don't attack into them because of course break the scale fiendish chain can activate during dem step but during their turn uh when they flip up you can fiendish chain it uh you can fiendish chain the construct fiendish chain the mid rash uh fiendish chain all the teller knights uh fiendish chain um the tour guide when they try to go into their dante of course uh fiendish chain the crane crane so uh the effect negation is very 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 key uh, 
And uh, for my last two cards, the one of the Compulse and the Zone of Warning. Uh, Bottomless and Turntor aren't good this format. Destruction isn't good this format, so I'm trying to stay away from it, of course. That's why I'm trying to stay away from Bear. Um, so, um, no, Bottomless or Turntor. I wasn't really a big fan of Turntor anyway, because I always felt like I was up and I really didn't want Turntor. But, you know, the not running Bottomless is um, different, different, but it's just not that good this format. So, yeah. So, that is the main deck, that is the Constellar Knight deck, what I have so far. Uh, like I said, I'm thinking about taking out the Teller Knights and maybe switching them with something, uh, you know, that's seven cards that I could literally take out of this deck and run some more. I can run, I can run the Triple Fiendish, I can run, uh, you know, more back row hate, I can run more monsters, I can just run a lot of things. So, uh, like I said, I'm considering just uh, changing the deck to just pure Constellars and taking that to the regionals. But uh, if you guys have uh, anything that you guys want to comment or say change or anything about that, be sure to go ahead and comment in the comment section. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to you guys helping me out with this deck. Because uh, if you haven't seen already, Daily Duels on Tuesday, of course, I did some play tests. Same exact deck, same exact deck. So, uh, yeah, you saw some goods and you saw some bads and you saw, you know, number generator being number generator, of course. So, uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go through the extra deck. I'm not going to do the side deck because you know that's kind of personal and um i base my side decks off of what my deck is so uh you know if any changes are made to this deck i will make changes to the side deck and you know what cards the side out of course so uh i really can't say that you know i can show you what the side deck is and then be like oh this is you know set in stone because it's probably not so i'm perpetually changing the side deck so uh, I'm not going to be doing that, but I can do the extra deck and explain uh, why the cards that I play and, um, you know, what changes I'm thinking about making. So, uh, starting it off, I run one, two, three Pleiades. I am a big fan of three Pleiades. I hate doing the two just because I feel like, uh, you know, with high consistency, with triple tanky, triple rota, triple polish, triple cost, I can pull off, and of course Sombre as well, I can pull off the three Pleiades and the duel. And it might be necessary to pull off their Pleiades. I don't like to do the drink play of, um, you know, going like Sombre, put the Pleiades back and then, you know, because I don't get the plus. So, uh, I personally like three Pleiades. I would consider putting it to two if completely necessary for the toolbox, but I personally like the three Pleiades. So, yeah, triple Pleiades. Uh, one Omega. Omega's pretty good. He works with the Telenites and the Constellars because, you know, uh, Focus, camera, focus, damn. You want to focus? Do you want to focus? There you go. Oh, that's a little bit better. Uh, Mega, you know, he's two level four light, so I can go like Altair, Deneb, Deneb Search, Ixie into Constellar Omega, you know, be unaffected by spells and traps, and also, uh, you know, when I had that Van Gies up, that's also nice as well, so, uh, one Omega. I'm running one Deltaros. I don't go into him that often, but when I do, he's pretty good, so just one. Uh, usually a regular Telenite deck would run two, but, um, you know, I only run this seven Telenite monsters compelled to, you know, Telenite's running, you know, Ununu Kahal and uh, Sham and all that stuff, so, yeah. Uh, and I said if I, of course, would turn the deck from Constellar, I mean, Constellar Knights back to just regular Constellars, he would be taken out, which will give me a slot open in my toolbox, so, uh, you know, that's also something to take in consideration, and I think I would know what card I would play. Uh, in replacement of him, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Uh, one crazy box, because, uh, Yang Zing skill drain is a thing, and I know it's a thing that, you know, people want to play, so I know they're going to try to come up with that skill drain, so I'm just going to go ahead and just go crazy box. 3,000 meter, that's stronger than anything that you can summon at the current moment, and then I'll flip with that vanities, and then they will cry, so, yeah. Uh, one Karagorgon, uh, you know, he's pretty decent at, you know, slapping... Uh, shit around, you know, when they try to target me, I could just go ahead and slap it at, slap it to something else, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, fairly decent when, you know, uh, Burning Abyss, they have a Pleiades and they want to see you nag, so, you know, you'll go summon, summon, and then they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, you know, they're not going to exit on me right now, so what can I possibly go into? Whatever they're going to, I'll compulse it with the Pleiades, and then they'll nag, and then I'll just go into Karagonol, and then they'll just be like, shit, but of course he's not that strong. I'm thinking about taking him out. Um, you know, he was in here when I was running, like, the Royal Decrees and the Kaiser Coliseums before I changed the deck to what it is now. So, you know, he could, like, kind of just go, you know, slap that, get that MST away from the Royal Decree, or get that MST off of the Kaiser, but uh, now he's just not that good, so I probably will take him out. I don't know, you guys tell me. Uh, 
I have uh, two Castells. Um, you know, Castell is really good. He is a lifesaver, and you know, especially when you're not going with the whole uh, three level, three level four rank like uh, Deltaros. You can just go, you know, Altair, summon Deneb, Deneb search for another Altair, which will have place, will get you place for next turn, and then you can just go into Castell. You can't attack, but you can still just go and just spin a card back to the deck. So you can go ahead and spin like a, just like, just like a D fissure on the field. You just go, whoop, spin it back. Or, you know, uh, a pendulum, like a, well, I know it's not yet, but, you know, uh, they have like, a, you know, tool in the pendulum zone. You can just go, Castell, whoop, put that tool back. So, uh, yeah, Castell, really good. Alright, I don't run 101 because I feel like Castell can do the job, and I really don't have room in the toolbox to run both Castell and 101, so I was like, which one's more important? I definitely feel like Castell is more important, so I went with him instead of the 101. I do have a 101, which I can put in the deck still, but, yeah, I'm just, you know, still debating on the toolbox. I'm sorry it's so shaky. I'm, my army's getting tired. <laughs> so, uh, of course, I run the one Exiton. Uh, fuck the reprint. It's the first edition, the original, and the reprints, yeah. Exiton, so course stable and sometimes I am down on resources so I love exitoning and coming back uh, my DT level chain that I am borrowing from my Ubel deck for this deck uh, you know it's kind of nice to go ahead and uh, put stuff put a monster on top of the deck and get me uh, set up for next turn uh, you know it's kind of nice to just go okay well I'm gonna go um, Altair some the neb the neb search and uh, Altair C into uh, you know like a Sombre and put that on top of the deck because you know getting Sombre is always nice or uh, you know maybe put like the Vega and then I can go Vega Altair and go for a Delta Rose next turn uh, sorry about the cut there my phone got full with memory anyway so uh i don't mind the level chain it's okay uh like i said uh depending on what if i turn the deck maybe to like pure consellers i might take them out just for more access to a toolbox you know oh my god i am shaking like crazy my arm's getting super tired i apologize uh you know it might be good if i'm running pure consellers to run maybe like price pay again just because i know that some decks do like to just whip out leo and of course leo would give my deck a super big problem i would pretty much lose if they whip out a leo because of course i can't target them so uh you know and he would just straight up kill me so uh press pay you go and you know two two constellers going to press pay and like attack over the leo so i might consider putting him in there but i'm just not sure all right and Emerald. Emerald, of course, uh, he can recycle. Uh, this, I'm not a big fan of him lately, but, you know, I've been seeing a lot of Telenet decks and they run them because you can recycle your Altairs. Uh, in Pure Cassellers, I probably wouldn't run him just because I really don't feel like he's really worth going into compared to your toolbox. Uh, but he's okay. I really haven't summoned him in a while, so I'll probably kick him out just for more access to my toolbox because it's really important. Uh, Dweller, because Dweller is Dweller, and he's good. Uh, Cowboy, because he wins games. Alright, sorry for the continued technical difficulties in this video. So, the first on my phone, uh, memory got too full, and then the second time that the cut, uh, my phone literally died. So, yes, I was talking about Cowboy, I mean, but was there much to say about Cowboy? I mean, he wins games, you know. Game, you know, bang, bang, skeet, skeet, GG. So, Cowboy, so good. And then the last card... Rhapsody, because he's good, you know, being able to take shit out of the graveyard and banish it's really nice, especially against Telenite, especially, just rip off that Deneb out of the graveyard, and then they just squirm, just, oh no, you took out my Deneb, but now what do I do, la 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 la, so, uh, Rhapsody, so, uh, what I'm thinking about doing when it comes to the extra deck. Uh, I, I know you guys probably know some things uh, when it came to the extra deck, and you're probably like, okay, well, uh, I really do like the three Pleiades, but I would be willing to drop it down to two. I'd have to play test it, but for right now, I'm really liking three. I do like the one Omega. As you can see, there is no M7. I kind of felt like M7 really doesn't bring anything new to the table. I mean, you take an M7, you have a Pleiades, it's empty, it ain't doing anything, you just slap an M7 on it because why the hell not? And then it can't even use its effect to turn on a summon and it really doesn't bring anything to the table. I, I, me personally, I'd rather feel like I'd rather have, I'd rather have three Pleiades than two Pleiades and an M7. That's just how I feel, you know. An empty Pleiades is still a 25 beater, I still don't mind it. 
um, but, you know, turn it into an M7. So if you if you survive to the next turn, you can go ahead and use this effect. I just don't really feel like it's worth being in the in in my extra deck and worth you know a spot in my toolbox. So I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of Volcasaurus. I never go into him. You know, if I can go into Volcasaurus, I'd rather go into a Pleiades, especially since Destruction's not good this format. I'd rather go into a Pleiades. So I'd rather go into Pleiades over Volcasaurus. Uh, a guy Charger, I also feel it's kind of like one of them cards that it's just there just to be there. Um, I, I wouldn't mind putting it in, the, you know, at all, because I guess turning a please into a guard charge for that pierce damage is, isn't too bad, so I, I'd consider it. Um, Deltaros, like I said, of course, if this doesn't, if this isn't a Toa Knight deck anymore, uh, then he will be out, so that's a, yeah. Uh, I like the crazy box, because fuck scale drain, so, uh, I would like the idea of having that in the toolbox, just in case I go against that in the regionals. Uh, Karagagan, uh, I'm still not, I, I've been up and down with this guy. Sometimes I'm like, oh wow, this guy's like really good and really cool, and other times I'm like, what the hell can he do that others can't? You know, what can, what can this guy do that, like, Omega can't, you know? And, uh, I guess you should run him just because you should run him. He's a nice 2450, so he's a nice beater, but, you know, I don't know. Eh. Uh, the two Castells, uh... I've been considering either running two Castells and one 101 or three Castells, but I'll probably just run the one, one 101 for A, the defense, and then B, you know, if I if I really get desperate and I, you know, soul charge, I can, you know, soul charge, summon four, and then, you know, make one into a Castell, make one into a 101, because you can only use uh, the effect of Castell of Sky Blast. Uh, Sky Musketeer only once because so even if I can exceed the two castells, I can't use both of effects. So that's why I was considering running the one one oh one. Um Exiton, don't need to talk about him. Rhapsody already talked about him, he's fine. Cowboy's good. Dwellers fine. Um these two. These two. Uh I I'm up and down with Oh my god, all the interruptions. Alright, this time I got interrupted by uh telemarketer calling, which uh closed out the video recording. Stupid. Oh my god, all the interruptions. Just splice this all together. It's gonna be like four different videos. Anyway, um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Like I said, I've never done this play in particular, the, the Emerald play, but, you know, I've just been seeing, uh, Telenite decks run it, and, uh, I guess I went with it. You know, I have one, so, yeah. The Wobble Chain, I kind of like them, you know. I kind of do like the idea of taking, like, a, uh, uh, you know, Xing and then putting, like, a Sombre on top of the deck or something like that. But that's more of a Stellar Knight play. I'd probably, if I took out the Stellar Knights and I was only running Perkins Stellars, I'd probably take them out just because I feel like that's a waste of resources to go into this guy when my resources are so dwindled in comparison, you know, to the Teller Knight deck where I could just go Altair, Deneb, search for Altair, X, you know, all the chain, but with Constellars, I, you know. I'm always, I'm negging, I'm negging. Whenever I XC, I neg, so I gotta make sure that my XC is definitely uh, worth the bang for the buck, so, yeah. Uh, the one card that I wanted to talk about, and I might be considering putting in my extra deck, is uh, Zen Mains. And the reason why I'm considering putting in Zen Mains is because, of course, um, uh, Stygian Dirge is a card. Uh, you know, it's being sided against um, both... Burning Abyss, and also, um, Telenite, so, uh, you know, I would just be a simple casualty, so, you know, reducing my, uh, monsters by a level, you know, can really hurt me, so I was thinking about running the Zen mains, in which not only can Zen mains, uh, be the C for the three, just in case they decide to do that, but, um, you know, I can go ahead and pop their, um, their, uh, their Stike and Dirge with the Zen mains effect, so, uh, I've been considering that, uh, Still not really considering Sheraton, even though Zen Mains could go with Sheraton, but you know, I, I wouldn't even like the idea. Even if I went Sheraton, search for cost, and then summon cost, I'd probably put I'd probably put the Sheraton to level 4 before reducing the cost down to level 3, so I don't know, that's just me. Alright, so there is the deck. Uh, so, once again, uh, thank you for watching this deck profile. I apologize that it was in shitty quality. Um, I do not have my tripod right now. I apologize for the proxies as well, but I just want to get this deck across. Uh, like I said, I'm thinking about just putting it as a Constellar deck and taking out the Telenites, but I just, I, I'm worried about the consistency of the monsters. So that's pretty much it. I'm worried about the consistency of the monsters, what I can run. You know, I was thinking about running maybe like 
uh, maybe like fiendish chains or uh, you know to help me with monsters and then also with an effect negation I was maybe thinking about Doom Caliber Knight you know the 19 beater whenever a monster artifact is activated I tribute him and negate it Doom Caliber Knight uh, so you know just play some back row take the real slow with Doom Caliber and just chill with it and be a nice 19 beater that negates effects so I was thinking maybe him uh, maybe Thunder King, maybe Honest, maybe, I don't know, maybe Main Deck in a Grand Mole, I don't know, but, uh, yeah. Right, so if you guys have any suggestions for this deck, please, please, in the comment section below, please tell me any suggestions, tell me whether you think that the Teller Knights is a good thing, or should, the Constellar Knights is a good thing, or should I just keep them in separate decks, because they just want synergy, what would you, uh, replace the Teller Knights for to keep them, remember, because if we take the Teller Knights out, I literally only have 12 monsters, so we gotta bump that up, like I said, I was thinking about the Doom Calibre, but, you know, tell me what you guys think about that. Alright, so, um, uh, Thank you for watching this live video. Uh, like I said, be sure to help me in the comment section below. I am looking forward to hearing your guys' response. Responses. And, uh, yeah, the regionals is on the 11th, so I gotta get this ready. You know, if there's any particular card uh, that you want to consider, uh, um, you know, money is no option, really, to an extent, because I pretty much have everything that I need for the deck, so, you know, if, if we need to put, if you think that we should, you know, up the Telenites and uh, you know, go with Novas, I got Novas, you know, uh, that's not even a thing, so, um, yeah. Alright, so, thank you for watching this live video, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys next live video, uh, I'm not sure what it'll be, maybe something from the regionals, maybe some, like, duelings, I don't know. Maybe duelings with the deck, that deck that you guys helped me build, maybe. Alright, so, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys in the next live video. Thanks for watching.